The Office of Management and Budget oversees the implementation of the president's priorities across the executive branch. One of those priorities is digital modernization at federal agencies. The goals being enhanced security, cost savings, and efficiency. And in the end, a better experience for Americans interacting with the government. The person leading that effort is Claire Martirana. She is the federal chief information officer. Claire, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Mimi. It's a pleasure to be here. So first, give me a general idea of OMB's role in strengthening IT modernization efforts across federal agencies. OMB has a very unique role because we have a whole of government role. Um, we work with all federal agencies on their budgets, on um, uh, cybersecurity, on information technology modernization, and we support uh, the federal workforce. So OMB uh, has a unique role and um, really focusing on delivering exceptional services to the American people. So the foundation of effective use of technology really is security. What is OMB doing to advance cybersecurity throughout the federal government? Well, cybersecurity is a priority of the Biden-Harris administration. Um, to really meet the moment that we are in, right? Staying ahead of our adversaries, uh, you know, being united across government um, to make sure that we're securing our systems, our data, and our services. We are working as a team. Um, it is really exciting to be part of this effort. Um, we are working with the National Cyber Director, CISA, NSC, um, agency CIOs and CISOs, and the C-suite of every single agency to make sure that cybersecurity is a key focus and that resources that we have in government are utilized um, and that we can help support agencies no matter where they are in their own journey. And what about implementing zero trust architecture? How much progress have agencies made uh, so far on that? Well, the president um, issued a cyber executive order this spring and we are getting ready at OMB to deliver our zero trust strategy. And, and simplistically, that means never trust, always verify. So if you think about cybersecurity in a way, you can think of it, um, the older model was something like a medieval castle, build the walls as big and tall and thick as you can, and no one can get inside. Our adversaries are clever. Um, and there is no wall that is perfect enough to keep us secure. And so the zero trust strategy really gives agencies a roadmap um, and getting them where they need to be in this new security paradigm. And how far along have they gotten uh, on that? Do you feel like it's, they've, they've made enough progress? We are making extraordinary progress across the government, but we're at the beginning of the journey. Um, we really have built this zero trust strategy with input from uh, experts, academia, the private sector, government agencies, um, really working together on these challenges, but it's a journey. You know, very similar to IT modernization, you can't um, flip a switch or buy a product that solves all your problems. It's really um, working with each agency, meeting them where they are and making sure that um, we have the right technical teams to be able to support uh, our federal environment. You're the chair of the Technology Modernization Board, which evaluates project proposals for the Technology Modernization Fund. There was another billion dollars allocated through the American Rescue Plan in March 2021. Um, so far, you've given out about 300 million, I understand. Can you describe the purpose of the fund and how you evaluate proposals? Yeah, thanks for that question. TMF is really exciting. Um, so far under the American Rescue Plan um, uh, 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 funding, our demand outstrips supply by two and a half times. Um, and we accelerated when agencies needed to deliver proposals. So if you think about that, it really does impact when you think about the entire federal enterprise, it shows how much pent up demand there is for IT modernization dollars. So what we do um, is we think of ourselves as strategic investors. We don't, um, this 
uh, TMF does not replace appropriations, it complements appropriations. And what we try to do is get technologists up front in the process so that we are able to review proposals, give guidance back to agencies. And the key thing that is really differentiating the way that we're implementing um, the TMF is we are working on scaling this across government. So when one agency moves out on a project, let's say they are starting and trying to determine their zero trust architecture, we learn from that. We develop playbooks. We share that information across the federal enterprise with our CIOs and CISOs. Um, and we really see that this fund is a catalyst. Um, it doesn't replace the annual process that all agencies go through, but it really can have a catalytic impact on us making progress faster and delivering better outcomes. And in, in talking about that fund, I mean, how do you make sure that the um, the projects that are funded are the funds are being spent effectively and efficiently? We have a very rigorous process. The uh, project management office at, at uh, GSA um, that uh, helps us support this fund. Um, we do not deploy, uh, we do not uh, uh, give out resources until we have uh, a plan with milestones and all of the financial, um, the financials of that project ironed out with the agency and with our project management office. In addition, we do quarterly reviews. We make sure people are on track. If they're not on track, we'll actually uh, deploy additional resources to try and help them. Again, like a strategic investor in the private sector, you don't just give them a million dollars and walk away. You make sure that you do everything you can to help support the project be successful, whether that's introducing the team to technical experts that they might not have on hand, or um, uh, again, bringing some resources that we already have in government together to support the effort and the staff um, at the agency that is uh, working on the uh, digital transformation or modernization project. Claire, um, we're talking about the technology modernization uh, fund, and I'm wondering if you think that the allocated funding is enough to accomplish the goals it was intended for. I think it is um, enough for the moment, but it does not solve all of our problems. As I said, the demand outstrips the fund by about two and a half times. And we know that we did not get um, proposals in from every agency. So um, we have a long way to go uh, as far as modernization goes across government. But I feel like uh, the American Rescue Plan um, funding for uh, the TMF is a really great uh, way for us to work together um, and try a different model. Try something um, that we hope will have significantly improved outcomes. Um, so that we continue to get uh, funding towards these really important efforts. So then what do you think are the biggest hurdles for agencies modernizing their IT enterprise? Um, every agency is at a different place in their journey, right? We have um, uh, challenges dealing with COVID, right? COVID taught us an enormous amount about how our business operations run and how te technology is an enabler for our agency missions. And in many places, we are coming up short and we have a real opportunity, um, both with this moment that we're in with COVID and with emergency um, funding like the American Rescue Plan to really look hard at these issues um, and try and create a path forward, um, which I'm excited about uh, participating in. Well, you know, improving um, digital modernization and cybersecurity are all priorities for the administration. Yeah. In addition to that, improving digital facing services for the American public is a priority for this yeah. administration. How's your office working towards that? Yeah, this has been a really cross governmental effort. Um, we recognize people are often frustrated when they interact with the government. Our job as technologists is to meet people where they are and help get them what they need, um, whether it's answering a question digitally, on the phone, in person. Our job is to help um, the American public interact with the government safely and securely and have a good experience when doing it. I want to ask you about the role of data across government, because it's something, you know, the federal government has plenty of data 
but isn't necessarily using it to its full potential to inform decision making. So what are the gaps you're seeing in the way agencies use and analyze data? Thank you for that question. I, I fancy myself a bit of a data nerd. Um, we have so much data in government, but it is in silos. Um, sometimes we don't even have the ability in one agency to share data between programs that would significantly increase uh, the uh, American public's interaction with that agency. So we are working really hard um, to create products and services that uh, harness the data that we have, but to protect it as we go, to deliver a more responsive government for the public. Um, that is a really critical part of uh, a, the customer service executive order that we um, just rolled out is focusing on how we can responsibly um, use data and ensure privacy and security. Tell me a little bit more about that, how you're, um, you're working with agencies to develop that use of data and then how it will ultimately benefit the American taxpayer. Yeah, the customer experience executive order um, puts customers at the center of every single thing that we do. So as agencies are developing their plans, it really gives us a mandate to put the customer at the front of the queue. Um, it is really, again, it goes to the point that every single agency is at a really unique um, individual place in their own journey. So we're starting sharing learnings, sharing. There are some agencies that are a little bit further ahead and they've done journey mapping, for example. They understand how their customers move through their business processes and how they are delivered service. So we're using those learnings, human-centered design, um, designing our services with our customers, not for them. Um, and I think that is going to significantly improve the way that we deliver services to the American people. Claire, I want to ask you about recruiting efforts for IT professionals in government. I know you're also trying to get younger workers into the federal workforce. How are you doing that? There are so many efforts going on across government. Um, for folks that are in earlier stages of their career, um, uh, the U.S. Digital Corps, um, there's Presidential Innovation Fellows, the United States Digital Service, um, the Technology Transformation Service, 18F, presidential um, management felt. There's all kinds of activity going on. There are great jobs for folks at all stages of their career in government. Um, I would say the best place to start is go to USA Jobs. When you look at the depth and breadth of opportunities on USA Jobs, it really does give you a bit of a perspective into how agencies are moving out on many of these technology and digital modernization efforts. And there's a huge demand for cybersecurity professionals throughout the country, but also within the government. I wonder what impact have those job openings been having on operations at federal agencies? Um, I have not seen federal agencies fall down on the job at all during COVID. I've actually seen extraordinary efforts by agencies to meet the moment um, provide services to their employees as well as to the people that we serve. Um, but it is hard. Um, there are There's definitely some fatigue um, in the workforce and we are constantly looking at ways that we can improve hiring so that we can onboard people faster, that we can um, really meet this moment. Um, because it's critical. All right, well, Claire, appreciate it. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thanks so much, Mimi, appreciate it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.